All right, now let's take a look at the installation. Um, the installation that I've got a mock up here uh, on the table is more so of a typical caravan or camper trailer application. Um, but it'll be very similar and we'll touch base on a, a few of the differences anyway on, on various different installations. But the primary layout here is very similar across the range of applications. So first off, where do we start? Well, we start at the, uh, the main starter battery under your bonnet, for example. Um, don't have one here on the table. However, whatever size lugs you've got, again, you're looking for the best possible connection to those battery terminals as well. So whether you have to add a buzz bar or whether there is room to go directly onto the battery clamp, um, for example, or some cars nowadays have sort of um, inbuilt fuse box, but direct connections, we don't want any voltage drop. Then what do we go through next? So on the DC to DC 40 plus, the 12 volt unit we'll talk about here, we have a 70 amp fuse. Now this can be either a 70 amp fuse or a circuit breaker. Um, one of the products that we sell and recommend quite often um, is the 70 amp MIDI fuse here. Now this can be replaced with a circuit breaker. However, the one to avoid is auto reset breakers. Um, we have many different issues and we see many different service vehicles coming in and uh, we've had issues with the DC to DC not performing or just dropping out completely. And quite often it is put down to the auto reset breakers. Um, they derate when they're in an under bonnet application there as well. They trip out and they reset. So you may not actually be aware that they've tripped out uh, until you get to the campsite and wonder why your battery is not charged. So a good quality circuit breaker um, or MIDI fuse here as well. So from the MIDI fuse here, we then run through the cabling throughout the vehicle. Um, and as I said, in this particular application, we're talking about a, uh, a tow setup here, so a caravan or a um, camper trailer, for example. So we've gone to an Anderson plug here. Uh, again, recommend using good quality, genuine Anderson plug um, terminals here, all based on avoiding voltage drop. Now, we'll talk about voltage drop again a little bit later on, but let's keep to the basics. So we're now inside the caravan. Again, simulating some wiring coming through here and probably to underneath your lounge, for example, or in your battery box area where the DC to DC is mounted. Um, so again, the screw terminals uh, are just located under this removable cover. Just two small black screws there. Um, just keep an eye on them. They normally stay pretty captive inside there. Um, but yeah, just keep an eye on them so they don't drop off, for example. So coming into here, so we can see our positive and negative connection here for the battery input side, which is obviously coming from your starter battery there. Now, without a solar panel application, it is then just as simple as on the battery output side, again, positive and negative, six mil lugs, running directly to your battery through the 60 amp fuse. So again, this one here is protecting the power either coming out of the DC to DC to the battery or vice versa, actually. Because you've got power here, if you get a short circuit through this particular cable here, running through your van, for example. We also want circuit protection that shuts the battery off as well. So 60 amp, again, good quality fuse, whether it be a MIDI fuse like this one here in a Buzzman holder or in a Blue Sea safety hub, you'll see on a lot of applications as well, or actually a circuit breaker. Again, no auto reset circuit breakers though. Now, some other more details side of the installation. Let's touch base on cable sizing first. Now, I can't cover all the different applications in this video. However, as a guide, we recommend 16 mil cable, smallest. 16 mil cable, which is also around six BNS. Six BNS is normally around about 13 mil. Um, so six BNS or 16 mil squared cable. Again, in the manual, there's plenty of information there about how long your cable run is compared to what your um, cable diameter should be. So as a guide, 16 mil or six BNS is the smallest that we recommend. Um, now on the application side, and we'll have a look at this later on in the actual uh, user side, uh, but the other two terminals here are for your solar input. Now that is unregulated solar. Uh, so for example there, if you've got fixed solar panels on your roof, um, either off your four wheel drive or off your caravan, for example, they wire directly into here, not through a solar regulator, because again, the MPPT solar regulators built in here. If you do buy any other brands or some of our other folding solar panel kits as well that come with a regulator, just remove those, bypass them and directly into here. Um, now I've also got a couple of other connections under here we'll talk about. The remote port there, 
At the moment, that's not used. However, we do have a remote coming uh, in the near future. So that will allow that if these are installed under your lounge in a hard to access place, for example, um, or maybe in the canopy and you do want to keep an eye off it uh, inside your cab off your four wheel drive, we do have a uh, display coming for that in the very near future. The next one here, temperature sensor port. So as I mentioned, the temperature sensor comes with the DC to DC. Uh, simple as plugging that one into here. And this one here is to go onto the negative terminal there as well. So on the negative connections or positive connections as well, we always recommend doing it in a Christmas tree effect. Um, that is the largest load or the largest cable size normally at the bottom and then stack it up to the smallest cable size, the smallest ring terminal, the smallest load on the top. Um, so again, because this isn't actually passing any current through it, it is just a temperature sensor located into here. It can be located on the top. So temperature sensor is only required for lead acid batteries or AGM batteries. Um, it is not required for your lithium batteries. So that's why you'll see most of the um, pre-made kits that uh, Enerdrive do, or even a lot of the caravan manufacturers, won't actually fit this on a lithium system. Now, another one that our tech guys always get the query of, why uh, is it that I'm not seeing the charge going into my battery um, from my EPRO Plus, or it can be any other battery monitor and all that. So just an example here, um, I've got one of our EPRO Plus shunts. Very clearly it's labelled up the top here. Battery, and then also system. Now it's key that the output of your DC to DC actually goes to the system side, not directly to the battery. There should only be one cable coming from the battery to the battery terminal of the EPRO Plus shunt or any other shunt, for example. From here is where all your negatives go off to. Now that will be off to your DC to DC, it may be off to an AC charger, also all your loads, your inverter and all that. So make sure that uh, if you are using a monitoring system that has got a shunt, that again, everything runs through the shunt, one cable only from the battery terminal here to the battery, nothing bypassing the shunt or else all your readings um, won't line up. For example, you won't actually see what the DC to DC is putting in. You'll always be getting your batteries appearing like they're going flat on the monitor.